In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. There is a story about an English teacher who is teaching his students about the past, the present, and the future, trying to make them understand the different tenses of the language. And he says a statement. He says, I am beautiful. And he asks his class, what tense is this? And the little girl raises her hand and says, long past, long past. You know, we live in a world that desires to strip us of our beauty, our God-given beauty, not beauty that we made with hairstyles or with makeup or clothes, but the divine beauty that's given to us by being made in the image and likeness of God. You see, God created everything in the days of creation. And after each thing he created, whether it was the stars, the sun, the vegetation, you hear these words, it was good. But when he creates humanity, you hear the words, and it was very good. Because mankind had been made in the image and likeness of God. And that image is something we still have. It's been tormented by sin. Many times it's been ripped apart by the devices of the devil and when we fall into his ways. But that image cannot be destroyed because it's from God and our God is immortal. The world will try to paint us many different pictures of what success is. The, the world will try to paint our own selves and make us something that we don't recognize. But our God sees beyond it all. Today we hear about two men who were known as demoniacs. They had been possessed not just influenced, not just swayed by sin, but they had been taken over by the devil. And they were known as demoniacs, so much that people stood away from them. But Christ is not afraid to approach them. And what do you hear the demoniacs, not even the people, but what do you hear the demoniacs, the demons are speaking through these two men? And what do they ask of Christ? They say, have you come here to torment us before the end of time? You see, the devil's smart, my brothers and sisters in Christ. The devil knows that he's already been defeated. And he knows he's going to lose. But he wants to take down with him as many of Christ's children as possible. But he knows he's going to lose. And that's why the demons speak through these two men. Have you come to torment us? Even now, before the end of time, because we know at the end of time we will be truly forever tormented by your presence. But have you already come now to torment us? Christ doesn't answer. Christ doesn't do anything to torment them. It's just His mere presence. And they're the ones that say, send us to the herd of swine. Christ doesn't desire to even mess with them. It's the demons that are fearful of His presence. And this is what we have to ask ourselves today. Is the life I am living are the actions that I'm doing, are they well-pleasing to God? Is the music that I'm listening to, could I share one of the earbuds with Christ and would He smile? Is the TV show that I'm watching, would I allow Christ to sit on the couch with me and watch it and be comfortable? 
is the internet or the phone that I'm watching, whatever it may be. Is it appropriate so that I would want Christ's eyes to see it as well? If it causes any sense of wishing Christ to not be in the picture, it's from the demons. And this is why Christ says, cut it off. Cut it off. Because it's a tug of war, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a tug of war. Christ is pulling you towards His kingdom where the angels live in complete bliss. <laughs> where all those who have gone before us, who have lived righteous lives, desire to sit at His table and be fed by Christ. And on the other hand, the demons who are in torment of Christ's presence, who don't wish to be in Christ's presence, are trying to pull you away towards the uttermost hell, where the devil and his demons will live in agony. It seems like we would, of course, pick Christ and allow Him to pull us. But so many times, little things of the world cling to us. And instead of letting them go, we hold on to them. And I'm not just talking about stuff. I'm even talking about feelings. Sometimes there's grudges between two people. Sometimes there's an argument between two people over nothing, over nothing. But if we forgive the other person, they've offended our pride and I won't do that. Look at Christ on the cross. He was willing to forgive the very people that nailed Him to the cross and desire them to sit at the table of His Father. And that's why the wise thief took hold of that and said, Remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom. And what did Christ say? Today you will be with me in paradise. He desires to give these words to all of us. But we have to be willing to sacrifice. We have to be willing to let go of those grudges, to let go of those hates to let go of those things that cling to us and weigh us down to the world. It's hard, but Christ has already done it. Christ doesn't ask you to do anything He hasn't already done. You know, I want to talk a little bit about the epistle because it seems kind of strange. The epistle, we read it today because today is the Dormition of the Mother of the Mother of God. Today is the Dormition of Saint Anne, her falling asleep. This is the woman who gave birth with Joachim to the Virgin Mary. And we hear this epistle, and what's strange about this epistle is, who are the chosen people of God? It's the Jews. Because from the Jews come Christ. But if you study the Old Testament, you'll recognize that Abraham had two sons. One's name was Ishmael, through the servant named Hagar. If you remember, God promised Abraham a son. But it wasn't happening. And so Sarah, this is perfect for a soap opera, Sarah said, use my slave. And Abraham did. And Hagar brought forth a son named Ishmael. But that wasn't the one that God had promised. And finally, after patience, Sarah bore a son. And his name was Isaac. Isaac, what a beautiful name. Laughter. So if you read through the Old Testament, you understand that the Jews are the chosen people of God through Isaac. But once you get to the New Testament, St. Paul writes to the Galatians that if the Jews choose to only live by the Old Testament and only by the old law and not the law of Christ, which is freedom, they themselves have become what? the children of Ishmael. You see, God does not do away with the Old Testament. He just perfects it. He takes an eye for an eye, a 
and says, turn the other cheek. And then he takes it even a step further and says, love your enemies and bless those who persecute you. This is the law of love that Christ desires us to live. And he lived it on the cross. And he wants us to reflect that. The demons and the devil want to strip us of our beauty and say that is something only in the past. But our Lord tells us, you are beautiful and I desire you to be even more beautiful in my kingdom. But you have to take up your cross and follow him. May our good God, who destroys all the demons, and who has shown the demons that he's more powerful than them, destroy the demons in our lives. And may we be willing to let go of them, of hatred, and of all bonds that hold us to this earth so that we too may be free and be children of his kingdom. To our good God be glory forever and ever. Amen.